What's up guys, Twitchy here, and welcome back to another episode in the Arc Server Manager series. Today we're going to be going over clustering. If you guys don't need clustering, feel free to skip back and forth in the video series. Hopefully you find something that's useful for you. But if you do need clustering and you want to know the easiest way that I know how to get it done in Arc Server Manager, stick around because we're getting into it. Alright guys, for the sake of this video, we're going to make one big assumption, and that is you already have at least one server set up good to go. All right, like you're really happy with the server the way it is. You just want to add more servers in as a cluster. If that's the case, what you can do is come down into your cluster ID area, which is cross arc data transfer cluster ID and cluster directory override. You're going to give yourself a cluster ID. Try to make it unique. We're just going to call mine TDG cluster. And I personally like to check the cluster directory override because that's going to put the cluster directory inside of a SM. All right, Arc Server Manager. So right there you go, we're gonna save that. And that right now has the ability to be a clustered server. Now, what I did was I just went ahead and got a Scorcher server. I just installed things on it. I didn't like add anything crazy. I didn't change any of the settings. I just got it, got it installed, made sure that the ports were not gonna conflict. Uh, which you can see here where we at. This one's using 7779. 7780 and 27016. And I just came down, I made sure it was set to scorched earth. I'm going to go ahead and drop this down and make sure it's set to use that and the multi home and everything. Good to go. We're going to save that. Now, here's the really interesting part of this. If we go back in here and we look at sync, we can actually take some of the work out of this situation. So what we're going to do now, we've done that with the with the Scorched Earth, we've done that with the Ragnarok, everything seems to be pretty much good to go. This is my main server, this is the one I'm happy with the settings on. So I'm going to go over here to sync, and I'm going to say that I want to sync to both of these, the Scorched Earth and the Ragnarok server. And I want to sync all of the settings, I'm going to select all of them, except for administration. And I am going to process that, and I'm going to say yes. So after that runs, you can just go down through and do some quick double checks here, all right? So one thing for sure we're looking at just here in the HUD and visuals, all right? HUD and visuals, I have allow crosshair, allow HUD, allow map player location, allow third person view, allow hit markers, all right? So let's look at all three servers now. Um, that one's good and that one's good. So it just takes all of those settings and it just copies them over to your other servers which is great, but there's a couple of things we really want to check. The first thing we really want to check is, oh my God, that is a mess. Let me go ahead and minimize that. First, we really want to check our server file details because these are all exclusive joined servers that I've set up over the course of this, prof the, over the course of this video series. So we want to look down here. I am in, 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 and I am in, in all the profiles. That's great. Then we want to go up here and we want to look at this. Let's see what maps and mods. We got the island. We got Scorched Earth. We got Ragnarok. Okay. We want to make sure that then we go down into our area here and we want to make sure that I can find it. Uh, we want to make sure that we do the same things here, right? So I'm going to go to this. I'm going to just control C that. So I make sure that they're the same. I'm going to control V that cluster directory. Save. I'm going to go to the next one. Cluster directories. And save. Now all of that's set up. Now here's a couple of little quickie things. You guys need to make sure that your Windows firewall rules are set up for all of these servers now and your port forwarding is set up for all of these servers now. The other little tricky part of this bit is that there's something in a router called NAT loopback. Um, basically, it's so that your computer can go out your network and back in your network to find your server. The issue is, is that clustering doesn't really work on a LAN if you don't have that. 
um, you'll have to manually move your profile every time you want to do it. So you got to make sure that your router has NAT loopback, you want to make sure that your port forwarding is done, and you want to make sure your Windows firewall rules are done. Once that's all done, then you just start up your servers, and since you have that cluster ID that's all the same, you'll be able to connect in. It's pretty easy. Uh, one other quick caveat I will tell you, ASUS routers, um, if you guys are using an ASUS router out there, they actually don't have any settings in them that say NAT loopback. They basically have something that's called NAT acceleration. If that's turned on, you're going to time out whenever you try to actually connect to your servers. I don't know why that is, but if you are having a timeout connection problem and you have an ASUS router, you may want to go in and just uncheck that NAT acceleration. So that's all good, great, and grand. We're going to get all of this stuff started up on the test server, and then I'm going to connect in via ARC, and I'll show you what it looks like from that end. All right, guys, we're here on the island server. We're on the green obelisk. We're going to head over here. We're going to look in the green obelisk and we're going to hit travel to another server. Um, and you can see both of the servers are actually showing up inside of the cluster. Now we want to go to um, Scorched Earth first. We're going to travel to Scorched Earth. Now, I've already traveled to Scorched Earth, so I have some stuff there. I just did it to test to make sure I could get there. So I put up a bed. We're going to spawn at the bed. I'm going to transfer my survivor. All right. And we're going to look here real quick like. And see that all of my stuff is the same. So we're good to go there. Um, let's go ahead and grab this RG. Actually, no, let's grab this RG. Wait a minute. Do we, how do we want to do this? No, I want to grab this RG. Um, <laughs> I want to grab this RG and come down here. So basically, we're going to come down here. Now we're going to travel to Ragnarok. If I, if I have this RG following that RG, it should fly back up there <laughs> and be there when I need it. Um, so yeah, we're going to come here real quick. We're going to look around see if we can find uh, anything that's going to attack us real quick like it doesn't really look like it but we look mostly safe um, well not really all right so let's land here knew we we're gonna get this guy eventually right yeah all right so now we're gonna land here and we're gonna travel to Ragnarok bye birdie If I can get to a spot here. Alright, so we want to go ahead and travel to another server. This time we're going to travel to Ragnarok. Join with Survivor. Let's see how it goes. Now, I haven't done the connection to Ragnarok as of yet. So, hopefully it just works straight out. It's looking pretty good so far. Alright. So, yeah, we haven't been on Ragnarok yet. Jungle, jungle, jungle. Um, we'll just go to jungle one. Spawn survivor. And here we are. But guys, it's seriously, it is that simple. I will tell you right now, if you're having a hard time with this, um, if you've got your server set up, they're all running. If you've checked your cluster IDs and all of that stuff, um, the first things first is, is you have to connect back into the server that you disconnected from. At least it used to be that way. Um, so check to make sure that your profile doesn't exist in multiple um, folders. Second thing, of course, if you guys are doing um, multiple servers, double check your port forwarding. Double check your Windows firewall rules. I can't stress that enough. There are so many people who have had problems with this stuff, and that's been the case. It's just been they haven't had um, their, their firewall rules or their port forwarding set up. And the last thing is going to be check your router. Make sure that your router has NAT loopback, because if it does not have NAT loopback, this is not going to work for you on your LAN. It'll work for the people joining your LAN, uh, or, or joining your server off of your land, so like people, your friends on the on on the internet, 
right? They'll be able to join in and do everything, but you won't be able to. So um, if you want to be able to move throughout your cluster freely, make sure that your router has NAT loopback, okay? Those are the big catches in it. Like I said, it's really, really simple. It does not take much at all uh, to get that stuff done. But yeah, guys, that's about it when it comes to clusters. It's not a whole, a whole lot. Just those couple of things I really stressed. Just pay attention to them. Um, I hope you guys found this video helpful, and I will catch you on the next one.